Hi, everyone. I'm Bob Jablonski. I'm an EA and a certified tax resolution specialist. In my firm, Bob Jablonski & Associates, we focus on helping real estate agents, real estate brokers, mortgage brokers, and also other small business owners who have similar needs. Um, we also help taxpayers resolve whether they're looking to file their taxes accurately, whether they're looking to minimize their taxes to the lowest amount legally allowable. And we help taxpayers who find themselves in trouble with the IRS, whether with it through an audit or owing the government. Uh, if that sounds like you, could start listening to our videos and please subscribe to our channel. Today, I'm going to talk to you about uh, a topic that often comes up when I have new clients and they want their taxes prepared. They're coming in and they want to know what kind of tax planning can they do to reduce their taxes. The problem is, is that many, many, most of the options and alternatives to reduce your tax, uh, tax uh, liability and do tax planning is gone by that time. The time to do tax planning is now. So today's topic is going to be six strategies to help you reduce your taxes before year end. Remember, one of the things that I always say is that taxes reduce your profits. You pay the government, you have less to pay yourself and to support your family. One way to reduce those taxes are to find legitimate expenses that are legally allowable and get and, and identify them and report them. Quick overview. I'm assuming when I'm going through this that the business is reporting on a cash basis. A curl basis is going to change a lot of that. These, um, these points... However, most small business owners are on the cash basis. I'm also assuming they're C, C, uh, Schedule C taxpayer. A lot of these things will work as well for S-Corps, C-Corps, things like that. But you may need to tweak it in some cases. Remember that business expenses that are paid personally on behalf of a corporation should be reimbursed in 2022 through an accountable plan so that it's deductible. And I always recommend that you work with an experienced tax professional. You can listen to, to uh, presentations like this, but to really understand it, find a tax professional. Strategy one, we're going to talk through six strategies. Strategy one is prepay expenses using the IRS safe harbor. So under the safe harbor, businesses can typically deduct qualifying expenses up to 12 months in advance. So we might be talking about your rent on the space that you have, vehicles, uh, lease payments on vehicles, rent uh, on equipment and things like that, insurance that you could prepay. Uh, an example that I'm going to give you here is you can pay your landlord for 12 months on 12 31 2022. Let's say you mail it to them because they don't want that income in 2022. They're not going to get it until January of 2023 when they deposit. It's a win-win. You get to deduct the expense when paid in 2022. And your landlord reports it when received and deposited in 2023. So it works for both of you. Keep in mind, you have to have the cash flow to make that work. But if you do, these are, this is an option that's available to you. Strategy two, hold off on billing customers to 2023. This is cash basis only under accrual. Whenever you earned it, uh, it, it has to be reported as income. Once again, be wary of cash flow. You need to be able to support the business if you're not going to bill to a subsequent month. Also, is the client reliable to pay if billed later? My example here is a tax guy, me, prepared a tax return on December 28, 2022. I typically require payment before the tax uh, return is released. But now, I, in this case, I don't bill them until January 1st, 2023. So they're not going to pay me until 2023. I've, I've made that work. I've, I've pushed that into the following year. Uh, the reality is, is that in my case, I don't like to have accounts receivable, so I most likely would bill them anyways. I don't like to have to collect later, but this might be something that worked for you. You may have a really low, reliable customer that you use over and over again. You know they're going to pay you. No problem. Strategy three, buy some office equipment this year. That includes, um, includes new and used machinery, equipment, desks, chairs, computers, things like that. Make sure you place them in service. You're using them uh, before the end of 2022. Uh, you're going to have some options here with bonus depreciation in Section 179 this year. Remember, the bonus depreciation begins to phase out beginning on January 1st, 2023. A lot of small business owners, that's not going to have a big impact on, but it, it, but it is happening. Are you considering buying a car, a new vehicle in 2023? 
Um, well, maybe you should consider purchasing it this year to get the, the, the uh, bonus depreciation in a section 179 deduction. Um, you're going to need to purchase it and place it in service in 2022 to do so. Once again, I'm not recommending you run out to buy a new vehicle you don't need, but if you're going to purchase one anyways in a, in a month or two, maybe today's the day to do it before the end of the year. Strategy five, use credit cards. And it's going to help you, first of all, remember the credit card payment is the same as cash. Once you pay it with a with a credit card, you are going to be you're going to be able to deduct it the same as if you wrote a check, gave them cash payment. It's also helpful when cash is an issue. Let's say you want to buy a bunch of things before the end of the year, but you really don't have the cash flow to to, to make that happen. Well, maybe typically, you know, maybe um, temporarily you finance it with a credit card, get it paid off in January of 2023. Here's an exception. Here's something to keep in mind. Remember I said you have to tweak some things when you're, you're a corporation. If you pay with a personal card, a corporate bill, you should be filing for a reimbursement and being getting, getting reimbursed by the company through a qualified reimbursement plan. You need to get reimbursed in 2022 in order to make this happen. Remember, we're talking about you're using a personal credit card for the purchase within a corporation. Strategy six isn't really a deduction, but it's just something I run into a lot. Are you taking too many? Am I taking too many deductions? Is this going to be something that's going to be a red flag for an audit? You know, my, my response is always, you should take every deduction you are entitled to. Uh, there's no reason to pay more taxes than you have to. And if those deductions are reasonable and customary, they are legitimate expenses under the law, and you've documented them properly, you can get up before the IRS using the three Ps, the purchase document, the payment document, and you could show the business purpose. Don't worry. Take the deduction, and, uh, and you, you will be able to support it later. You won't have a problem. What if it creates a loss? Do I really need a loss? Well, just don't forget to carry that loss forward. You don't lose it. So make sure you carry your loss forward to future years. Sometimes people don't understand that. They're doing their own taxes. They miss it. So don't forget that. Hope you liked this video. If you did, please uh, like, the, like the video so others will watch it. If you're not a uh, subscriber, please click that button right now and subscribe. If you leave a comment below, I will do my best to get back to you as soon as possible. And um, remember, if you want to set up a free consult, 15-minute free consult, contact me. You can get on my calendar at https colon slash slash jablonskiandassociates.com slash contact. And I'll also have that in the description below. Thanks again for listening, and I hope you all have a great day.